Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, I've got up on the screen right now the Edge broadcast with uh, Daniel Oat, the host there. And I owe him a tremendous apology. Supposed to be on with him on the 8th at 8 p.m. We were going to record a broadcast. Some reason in my brain, I thought the 8th was Sunday today. In fact, I told my wife we cannot travel Sunday because we had the uh, the interview there with Daniel Oat, and uh, that really disappointed me. I didn't see until, um, gosh, well, I guess it was late last night, about 10.30, that uh, I had my days totally crossed. I sent Daniel an email, uh, but I know that doesn't fix that, I, but I want to just really sincerely apologize uh, to him uh, here on our broadcast there, uh, because I was really looking forward to going on with him. Uh, anyway, so sincerely, Daniel, I do apologize for that. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the broadcast, what we're doing today here. Uh, I've got some different things. I'm actually working on three different broadcasts today. Hell on Earth, A Mercenary's Life in Ukraine. One of the first things I saw here on RT there, and what really caught my attention, though, is a quotation in the article. Uh, Earn money by killing Slavs. Uh, the conflict in Ukraine has drawn in thousands of foreign mercenaries motivated by glory and, in the Kremlin's words, the chance to earn money by killing Slavs. Uh, however, those lucky enough to come out alive have described life on the front lines as miserable and short. Now, why do I bring this up? Now, I'm, I want to quote some more in this article here in just a moment here, but if you remember, Edward Hudos he is the former rabbi and also mayor of Kharkiv, uh, or Kharkov, however you want to pronounce that, there in Ukraine, the very large city that fell under a brutal battle between Russia and Ukraine, uh, backed by NATO forces there. And this, this man right here, Edward Hudos, still speaks publicly. Uh, his uh, broadcasts are in Russian. You can find them just by looking up his name, though. But uh, he says here in the first Khazaria, the native people in Ukraine were taken over by Jews and converted to Judaism. Uh, from this beginning in the 7th and 10th centuries, and battle line had been drawn with Russia. Now, I actually read that there part there. We're going to go into where he talks about the killing of the Slavs here in just a moment. But I read that because you remember the video that I had of Rabbi Ariel Tzedek. And this video here, Extraterrestrials, Disclosure, Biblical Prophecies, and Kabbalistic Revelations, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Tzedak here actually speaks in here about how that the, the Gentiles are always converted to become Jews, and, and mass numbers, no less. Uh, I thought I had that pinned in here where it was at. I could not find it before making this video here. But I'll try to remember to put this in the links below for you because of just some very interesting things that he says. You know, in fact, there's some things that he says that if you flipped the narrative, in other words, if you would put the, the evil for good and the good for evil, I could probably agree with him on some of his points there. But when you put the reptilians as the good guys instead of the bad guys, that's where I kind of really just blows me away. Anyway, going back to... Um, uh, Edward Hudos there in the article here where he speaks about this. He's quoting from the speech in 1994 uh, by Menachem Schneerson, where it says, is published in the Volgrad newspaper, Slovenia, Chabad leader, uh, uh, as they call him, Messiah Menachem Mendel Schneerson, outlined his plans for destroying both Ukraine and Russia. He says in this quotation here, Slavs and among them Russians are most unbending people in the world. Slavs are unbending as a result of their psychological and intellectual abilities created by many generations of ancestors. It is impossible to alter these genes. A Slav Russian can be destroyed but never conquered. That is why this seed is subject to liquidation. Notice that, subject to liquidation, and at first a sharp reduction in their numbers. First of all, we will divide the Slavic nations of 300 million, half of them Russians, into small countries with weak and severed connections. For this, we will use our old method, divide and conquer. We will try to pit these countries against each other and suck them into civil wars for the sake of mutual destruction. 
That's what it's become. It has become a place of mutual destruction. And uh, make no, no bones about it, that's exactly true. I want to play this clip of the news piece of RT from this morning here for you because this one is also very disturbing, the information you'll hear in this here. A huge experience when it came to dealing, finally, with people. Today's neo-Nazis wouldn't stand for just gassing people and burning them in ovens. First, they'd harvest organs and sell them at a profit. And in this article here, or this news clip here, that's exactly what uh, they're uncovering uh, inside of Ukraine now is the massive, uh, not only loss of life, but also the harvesting of organs. Ukrainian doctors were trained in organ extraction by foreigners. Head of the DPR, Alexander Zahachenko, assassinated by Ukrainian Nazis, left an article about terrible finds discovered in 2014. It's very sad when you listen to this, but when you go back also to uh, to the losses that are going on over there in Ukraine. Losses were immediate and horrific two weeks after Zelensky's appeal. A Russian missile strike on the training center of Yavorov near the Polish border killed up to 180 foreign mercenaries whose positions was reportedly given away by social media posts there. Uh, you know, it, it's just really, really, as I've said, it is absolutely horrific. Uh, the things that are going on inside of Ukraine. And of course, this, uh, this news clip, like I said, it continues on about the organ harvesting and the mass burial graves, etc. And then how they're getting rid of the bodies and calling them missing in action. It says also here, of the initial recruits who survived the attack on one, one Britain described how the Ukrainian commanders were sending untrained guys to the front line with little ammo and, well, S-H-I-T, A-Ks, and they're getting killed. Uh, another one there, uh, let's see, we had um, uh, this here, are mil are U.S. military Marines that were involved, ABC News in February, it's been nonstop all day night, the life expectancy is around four hours on the front line. Uh, this is my third war I fought in, and this is far by far the worst one, another former Marine told the Daily Beast last week there. If we discovered such gatherings, for example, as in the Krem Krematorsk, we would destroy them because these people have declared war on us, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said after the strike there that killed actually 20 foreign, uh, foreign mercenaries. But uh, let's see here, I, I wanted to see here, I was trying to let this uh, one clip move forward because of the fact that there is a uh, an American journalist that was reporting also on the atrocities of human organ trafficking that's being done inside of Ukraine from these victims there. And they say that even in, the, in this newscast here that many of the victims, uh, they will be not even dead, they're being sent to the hospital, but because they seem to be good candidates, they're not even given the proper treatment that could have saved their life because it's more important for them to be able to harvest the organs while the person is still alive. Uh, you know, this is like unbelievable, but it's part of the horrors of war and it's what's being uncovered. Uh, I mean, some may actually consider this to be propaganda, who knows, but uh, the issue is, is that it's, it's very, very serious what's going on over in this part of the world and the death toll is just staggering. Uh, the number of people that are dying in this war. So it goes right back to what Edward Hudo said, that they would pit the Slavic people against one another. Here's the, here's the uh, journalist I wanted you to be able to hear. In the level of crime, you're creating a whole new category of victim. If anybody that's in the hospital, and whether it's Ukrainian military, whether it's a, a prisoner in Ukrainian custody, or it's people from a Donbass village because they want to cleanse them out too. And their value is no or longer said, their, the out. sum of their lives. Their value is what you can get on an open market for their body parts. 
And this is disgusting. But this is just part and parcel with what the government of Ukraine has become. Once the richest of the Soviet republics, Ukraine. Very sad to, to hear about that. One of the things that popped up at the bottom of the screen while that was playing, though, if you'll notice, was the U.S. has approved the uh, cluster bomb munitions to be used on these front lines there against the Russians. Uh, they're just not having any success uh, whatsoever in being able to push back uh, the, the Russians there. That's exactly what you're seeing on your screen is what cluster bombs look like when one has been dropped. Uh, not only will it be a major uh, uh, loss of life for the Russians as well there, but it's going to be a major loss of life for civilians too for the U.S. to be approving that. Now what's really interesting though when you go to look into, uh, let's see if I can pull up the right ones here, uh, when we go to look into some of the things that are being said, this here was where when Russia was being accused of doing the same thing, uh, and this was the State Department's response to that. First, listen to the question, and then we'll listen to her answer. Um, there are reports of illegal cluster bombs and vacuum bombs being used by the Russians. Uh, if that's true, what is the next step of this administration, and is there a red line for how much violence uh, will be tolerated against civilians in this manner that's illegal and potentially a war crime? It is. It would be. I don't have any confirmation of that. We have seen the reports. Uh, if, if that were true, it would potentially be a war crime. Obviously, there are a range of international fora that would assess that. Um, so certainly we would look to that to be. A the two things I'll point out, and I'm not saying that Russia didn't use them either. They may have, uh, but at, this, at that time, the State Department did not have proof that it was actually done. There was no confirmation of it, but they actually call it a war crime. But now we are approving for that very war crime to be sent to the front lines. U.S. plans to send controversial cluster munitions to Ukraine. Uh, and here you have it here. Now that it's has been approved ways. since this particular announcement. We recognize that cluster munitions create a risk of civilian harm from unexploded ordnance. This is why we have defer, deferred the decision for as long as we could. But there is also a massive risk of civilian harm if Russian troops and tanks roll over Ukrainian positions and take more Ukrainian territory and subjugate more Ukrainian civilians because Ukraine does not have enough artillery. That is intolerable to us. Ukraine would not be using these munitions in some foreign land. This is their country they're defending. These are their citizens they're protecting. And they are motivated to use any weapon system they have in a way that minimizes risks to those citizens. So now what would be potentially be considered a war crime is being uh, now dubbed as potentially okay to do uh, so long as the United States approves of it. Uh, so just none of that is good. Listen here, the agreement broke, uh, broken by Ankara Kiev with return of Azov troops offensive fails there. Let me see, I forget why I had this up here. Dmitry, Dmitry Peskov. The Ukrainian side and the Turkish side violated the conditions. Like, uh, Singapore, we... Oh, well, I lost that spot there. I'm uh, sorry about that. I uh, shouldn't have hit that one there. So, but anyway, we'll continue on there. Uh, I'll end up po posting this Doug McGregor and his interview series there about Ukraine. We'll put that over on our Facebook page, Israeli News Live, and, uh, and then maybe also on our Telegram page there. Um, uh, let me just, just so, because a lot of you guys, some of you may not be aware about our Facebook page there on Israeli News Live there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now just so you can see there because uh, it's been a long time since we've really actually talked about that there. But I want to post that article there. It's got a video in there uh, of uh, Doug, uh, uh, Colonel, Colonel Doug McGregor and some of his uh, comments on there. I think it's very, very valuable information uh, and I think it's worth uh, listening to there. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have the time to be able to get into that now. Uh, let's see here. We also had two. This was uh, uh, the Pentagon speaking about the, the cluster bomb munitions there. The new drawdown of military assistance to provide Ukraine's forces with additional munitions, weapons, and equipment needed to defend their country and push back on Russia's war of aggression. With the announcement of this 42nd presidential drawdown package, the United States has committed more than 41 billion billion in military assistance 
wow. since Russia first launched its unprovoked and brutal war against Ukraine on February 24th, 2020. You know, it's interesting how the Pentagon will say it's unprovoked war, but we actually had done the broadcast back right, uh, right after this war started there, uh, bringing out the information where NATO was already backing Ukraine to launch a major offensive against the Donbass region to overtake Donetsk and Luhansk region there. Uh, with NATO's support and help to do so. Uh, so it wasn't so much an unprovoked war. Staged war is what I would prefer to call it. But uh, anyway, those, those are the uh, bits that I wanted to share this morning. Uh, I've actually been working uh, yesterday. Uh, wasn't doing so well physically either yesterday, so it was very difficult uh, to try to put together. But I've been working on uh, a message on a teaching on behind the veil uh, or, the, or the renting of the veil. I don't know what I'm going to call the message there. Hopefully I can get that up here this morning for you as well. I've got pretty much everything ready to go, but I wanted to get our news broadcast out to you as quickly as we could. And again, uh, my sincere, sincere apology to uh, Daniel Oat there uh, with the Edge broadcast there. Daniel, I do sincerely apologize for that. Uh, I do not know how my head got mixed up with that. I was so adamant with my wife that we could not travel Sunday, thinking Sunday was the 8th. And that's the bad part. I knew the date. But I didn't realize that Saturday was the 8th already. Anyway, you have a great day. Talk to you guys later.